What is going on, Klansmen? Welcome to the Killer Countdown. I'm your black face of horror, Sean Bass, and today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. Well, kind of the same, but different. Like the same franchise, but just a different idea. Anyway, the shape known as Michael Myers has taken on many different forms and looks throughout the years, from his height to his weight to the quality of the mask and overall mystique of the character. So I figured why not rank the actors who played the shape over the years from worst to best. I will not be including the actors who played Michael at a young age, nor Tony Moran who played the unmasked version of Michael in the original Halloween movie. With that being said, my criteria goes as follows. Overall camera presence, mannerisms, kill style and approach, look of the mask, which doesn't carry too much of an impact but is still semi-important, depiction of the Michael Myers character, and last but certainly not least, the stalker walk. You know, the walk that he does when he keys in on his target like a homing missile during like a main chase scene, you guys know what I'm talking about. With that being said, the actor coming in at number eight, who is also my least favorite, is Don Shanks from Halloween. Five. No, 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 and no. As I've said in my Halloween rankings video, this is the worst characterization of Michael Myers ever. The decision to try and humanize the character is overly contrived and comes out of nowhere. The mask is way too big, especially around the neck area. Don Shanks is a pretty big individual, so to me it looks like his growth spurt started at the top of his head, but it failed to make the left turn at Albuquerque somewhere around the neck region. And why does he constantly hold the knife up this way? It's so awkward looking, and it's like when the director tells him to stand in place, it's like he has no idea what to do with his hands. The kills for the most part are mediocre. The only one that stands out is when Michael kills Michael. Other than that, there is no other satisfying aspect to this performance. In at unlucky number seven goes to Brad Laurie, who played Michael in Halloween Resurrection. His performance was pretty strong in the first part of the movie. I love his walk when he's going to break through Laurie's room door. That was a fantastic shot. The mask, however, doesn't really look all that good. The reason behind the mask is it's supposed to represent an endless abyss of just evil and darkness, something that isn't human. So why does this mask have so many human-like features? The eye black around Brad's eyes beneath the mask. The mask also kind of has like this very smug look on his face as if Halloween landed on a Monday and he just hasn't had his coffee yet. His hair is all frizzy and the salon is just backed up so his entire situation is just unfortunate. And just because I said the mask doesn't have that much of an impact on my rankings, still doesn't mean I can't take time out and making fun of it. Now, let me go on and tell you that despite a strong start in the beginning, why Brad Lowry's performance ended up on the bottom part of my list. His killing approach is way too sloppy. Michael is normally a stealth based character, silent but very deadly. Now given the fact that he's placed in a house with multiple people and there are cameras pretty much everywhere, one would assume he'd try to stay hidden as much as he can. Instead of letting Freddy walk away to go back in the garage and kill Nora, why not kill them both? Then destroy the streaming equipment. So the murders he commits would be broadcast to a national audience. And how about potentially being found standing in the room when Rudy is searching for Jen, as well as crashing through the mirror to kill the dude from American Pie and just coming out in plain sight in front of everyone to behead Jen. But the worst part out of all of this is his screams. I didn't like hearing him scream in the theaters when I first saw it, and I don't like the screams now. <laughs> Taking the number six spot is Dick Warlock from the original Halloween 2. I meant to do the dick part here to like, anyway. Coming in at number six is Dick Warlock from the original Halloween 2. Now I know I mentioned the head size of Don Shanks in Halloween 5. Well, Dick Warlock kind of looks like a lamp without a shade on top of it. It's kind of like he gave like the original inspiration for those like fat head posters, but like uh, he's like a literal representation of the original Fathead poster. With that being said though, it definitely gives his Michael a much more sinister look, especially when it's combined with the mask's discoloration and deformation. His kill style is a little more brutal overall when compared to the first installment, which I enjoyed. I'm just not a fan of the scene where he jumped up from behind the couch. It was pretty silly. <laughs> Dick Warlock's camera presence is also pretty minimal. His movements, including his walk, is very stiff and robotic. 
and it also doesn't help the fact that he walks around with a scalpel. Honestly, I think he'd be better off carrying a butter knife. At least it's bigger than a scalpel. Well, shit, he'll even be a lot scarier even if he carried around like a turkey baster. Where is the turkey baster? Hey, mom. We're gonna have to cancel Thanksgiving. Taking my number five spot goes to Tyler Maine, who played Michael Myers in both Rob Zombie reboots. Clearly the most physically intimidating, standing at a whopping six foot nine, Tyler Maine's Michael had tons of potential. I like his mask more in part one than I did in Rob Zombie's part two. I like the aging effects that were put on the mask, which is something that wasn't featured in Halloween's 4 through Resurrection. Although the aging in the original Halloween 2 was purely incidental due to poor storage conditions, I'll still count it. But I didn't like the look of the mask in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Mainly because he spent a majority of the time not even wearing the mask, it became an afterthought despite the mask being one of the main factors that made the shape mysterious. When he did wear the mask, I didn't like the fact that you could still see half of his face. This is a big reason why he ranks on the bottom half. I know I keep reneging on my criteria here, but I just can't let the fact go that in Halloween 2, the mask was made more of an afterthought than anything else, which I wholeheartedly believe that that is something that can't go unpunished. The backstory in Rob Zombie's Halloween helped me buy into the psychopathic nature of Michael, which makes sense why his kill style is over the top, especially in part two. I am not a fan of the constant grunting though. The only sounds I feel like Michael Myers should be making are the sounds of him breathing in the mask. Is that too much to ask for? His Starker walk is really good and adds to the intimidation of his physicality as well. I really love the scene in part two where he's circling the security booth. He just looks so damn menacing. It's kind of like a lion just stalking its prey almost. And overall, Tyler has fantastic camera presence and completely owns the role in his performance. Why am I still holding this? Taking my fourth spot is George Wilbur who played the shape in Halloween's four and six. 6-6. Six, six. George Wilbur's Michael is probably one of the most no-nonsense killers on this list. Halloween 4 had quite a few great kills like sticking his thumb into the forehead of the EMT, straight up ripping Earl's face off, and taking out the police force. But if Halloween 4 was brutal, Halloween 6 turned the dial all the way up to 11. I'm talking massive amounts of bloodsheds from beginning to end. The mask in Halloween 4 takes a bad rap, but over time it did grow on me. The beginning had some really unflattering angles and lighting, which made the mask look really cheap and silly, but as the movie went on, it wasn't that bad. The mask in Halloween 6 was by far the best since the first Halloween. As for George's stalker walk, it's one of the weaker ones. In Halloween 4, there isn't any real extended shots of him actually targeting and stalking in a chase scene, but his movements are still pretty robotic. Halloween 6 is pretty much the same for the first half, but once he goes off and starts killing all the surgeons, his walk is fantastic, his movements are more loose, so there's some anger emotion that just radiates from him. It also took me a while to notice that in the chase scene going down that red corridor, if I'm not mistaken, he was chasing a patient. Um, and behind him, it's like, it looks like he's practically running. That is some, <laughs> that is some scary shit. <laughs> so I'll give George Wilbur that one. And rounding out my top three has to go to Chris Durand from Halloween H2. Oh. To this point, Chris Durand was the least physically intimidating since Dick Warlock in Halloween 2, but his performance makes up for it and then some. They used three different masks in this movie and they were all bad for one reason or another. The main mask that was used, which revealed his eyes, was the best option. The close-up shots didn't do much justice, but there were a few scenes that the revealing eyes actually worked. Chris did a good job of using his eyes to convey emotion. The scene where he starts flipping tables over, you can see it in his eyes that he's fed up and ran out of patience with this whole cat and mouse game. And of course, you could tell he didn't appreciate getting hit in the nutsack. So in my opinion it works and it boosted his camera presence and mannerisms. The Starker walk is also one of the best in the franchise. I love how his head is tilted down a bit as if he's keying in on his target. It's just a badass look. His kill style and approach is a bit similar to the original Halloween which makes everything work because Halloween H2O was more of a return to form for the Halloween series. And in at number two, this is a very 
hard and difficult decision that I had to make. This name flip flopped between spot one and two for weeks on end. So without further ado, my number two that rhymed goes to Nick Castle in the original Halloween. Nick Castle's performance was one of the more creepy depictions of Michael Myers. His energy just radiates this spine chilling aura even when he's simply just standing in place. Nick Castle's movements comes off as very loose and fluid when compared to pretty much every other actor. His loose movements definitely add to his stellar stalker walk and chase scenes. I also can't get enough of how he sits up and looks over at Lori after being stabbed in the eye with the wire hanger. Every single aspect of this performance set the standard when it comes to adding the feeling of terror when you play a character that doesn't talk and wears a mask that hides your face. Obviously the original mask is unbeaten and is unmatched by every other versions that came in the following installments, which paved the way for one of the most unsettling performances in horror movie history. And fucking spoiler alert, number one goes to James Courtney who played the shape in the new Halloween 2018 film. Finding a place for James Courtney was a very difficult decision, but the ultimate reason why he takes my number one spot is because this Michael has 100% continuity unlike any other Michaels in the original Halloween timeline. Dick Warlock in Halloween 2 is supposed to be the same Michael during the same night. The mannerisms alone made it hard to buy that this was the same performer. Next is the Jamie Lloyd trilogy. They did a great job reestablishing Michael's presence in part 4 down to the burn scars. He was just a wrecking ball of pure evil the moment he snapped out of a coma. Halloween 5 screwed everything up when they tried to give him human characteristics and a heart. Part 6 stripped away the heart, but this time serves up an overly explained motive that takes the I'm an endless abyss of darkness and evil and gives it a bright and shiny face, which was the curse of the thorn. Halloween H2O scraps Halloween 4 through 6. Michael's back, but there aren't any burn wounds. The effects of him burning alive in part 2 is just slightly mentioned in a single quote. You told me yourself you watched him burn. Halloween Resurrection Michael feels more like a copycat killer more than anything, honestly. Halloween 2018 progresses the Michael character to perfection. The mask is phenomenal and the aging of it is as good as it can get. Multiple battle scars are worn like badges of honor. From the injured eye to the stab wound in his neck, there isn't a definitive chase scene that showcases the stalker walk, but I do like what we get to see where he first shows up on Halloween night. I freaking love the turn he does just before he attacks the lady with the hammer. Now that entire one take scene is very gimmicky, but it perfectly showcases Michael getting back into his element. He was a bit overexposed, but James completely owned the scenes that he was in. Mix that in with a great look, he still remains very creepy. In every single Halloween sequel, there was always something goofy about the Michael Myers character, ranging from the looks of the mask, his backstory, or the character depiction. Halloween 2018 was the first sequel that I was actually able to take the Michael character 120,000% fully serious. This is exactly how you showcase a 40 year old legacy. Despite the other problems I have with the movie, James Courtney is still my favorite Michael Myers actor. And there we have it Klansmen. In the comments section below, tell me exactly how you would rank all of these actors. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. I truly appreciate it and make sure you subscribe. So join the killer countdown clan. Just don't go burning any crosses now. That was stupid.